it is just simply not liberal anymore. What liberalism used to mean, I mean, well, what it still means is being accepting, being tolerant of people who think differently than you and understanding that the individual has has dignity just because they're an individual, not because of their race, not because of their gender, not because of whatever other characteristic you want to label them as, just because they are an individual in our society and they're allowed to have a view that's different than yours, they're allowed to live their lives differently than than you are. Um, it's I, I think actually though this has become a lot bigger than just left or right. Like it's really that that's not what it is. It's it's become sort of more authoritarian versus liberal uh sorry um libertarian it's on the one hand you have people who want to take control sort of of how other people uh think and how they live and all of that because they think that they have the right answers and on the other hand you have those who say well you know we're not all necessarily going to have a consensus here but the the important part is that we agree that we can disagree, uh, which I think is a lot healthier for society. More and more, we are hearing about certain fringe ideologies making their way into our publicly funded institutions and taking reign because anyone who dares question or speak out against them is guilted into submission by way of smearing, ad hominem attacks, or straight up censorship and arbitrary punishment. For Rebel News, I'm Tamara Ugolini, and in the story that I am featuring today, you will hear from an Ontario teacher who has witnessed this firsthand when voicing concerns over the doctrine known as critical race theory, or simply CRT. Chanel Fall, she is a 29-year-old high school teacher who primarily teaches general science and biology, and she had no idea that making a basic neutral statement on a private Facebook group for teachers would backfire to the extent that it has. In this exclusive interview, I'm going to discuss this situation with Chanel and get her take on the comments that she made that caused such a stir. But first, I'm also going to ask for your help because what Chanel is up against is absolutely ridiculous and, in my opinion, completely unwarranted. Through the registered charity called the Democracy Fund, we will be crowdfunding Chanel's legal defense at no cost to her. So if you're able to, you can chip in and help assist her with this fight at stopcrt.ca. At that special website, we have a petition that you can sign geared toward the Ontario government telling them to stop CRT. There's an email campaign as well where you can quickly fire an email or a note off to your elected representatives and a donation button, of course, where you can assist with the legal fund as we take cases such as these. But in order to get a full understanding of just how absurd all of this truly is, have a listen to what happened to Chanel why I have you on today is to discuss this, these comments, this comment on social media. And I know online things can often get misconstrued and distorted, but I thought what you said was actually quite mundane. So can you clarify for us what you were defending and or arguing for exactly? Sure. So uh, what happened was in February, 2021, so over a year ago, I was in a private Facebook teachers group, uh, an Ontario teachers group, and there was a teacher looking for BLM resources uh, to, to use in class. Um, it was Black History Month, so I guess she, or he, I can't even remember, wanted to use it in class. And now um, BLM, Black Lives Matter, is a political movement, and the highly controversial critical race theory is its underlying philosophy. So I don't believe it to be appropriate personally for teachers to be partial to its visions or its aims in a classroom. And CRT has been the foundation for concepts such as white privilege, white fragility, and those concepts are currently being taught all across Canada and beyond. Um, CRT also posits that 
racism permeates our society and it's found as every at every level of our society and in every interaction. So uh, this is a theory. It's not a fact. And so uh, my comment was essentially, I said, I don't believe kids should be indoctrinated in school with with critical race theory. I think schools should be nonpartisan. Um, I said we should simply focus on modeling kindness and oppose all forms of discrimination we see. And I also pointed out that in some places right now, it's actually illegal to teach um, contested ideas like those stemming from critical race theory as fact. Um, so with that, I my second comment, I posted a link to a video, a YouTube clip of a UK member of parliament, Kemi Badnock, who was explaining why their government stands against critical race theory. What we are against is the teaching of contested political ideas as if they are accepted facts. We don't do this with communism, we don't do this with socialism, we don't do it with capitalism. And I want to speak about a dangerous trend in race relations that has come far too close to home to my life, and it is the promotion of critical race theory, an ideology that sees my blackness as victimhood and their whiteness as oppression. I want to be absolutely clear, this government stands unequivocally against critical race theory. Yeah. The, some schools have decided to openly support the anti-capitalist Black Lives Matter group, often fully aware that they have a statutory duty to be politically impartial. Black lives do matter, of course they do, but we know that the Black Lives Matter movement, capital B, L, M, is political. I know this because at the height of the protest, I have been told of white Black Lives Matter protesters calling, and I'm afraid, uh, I apologize for saying this word, calling a black armed police officer guarding Downing Street a pet. That is why we do not endorse that movement in on this side of the house. It is a political movement and what would be nice would be for members on the opposite side to condemn many of the actions that we see this political movement instead of pretending that it is a completely wholesome uh, anti-racist organization. There is a lot of pernicious stuff that is being pushed and we stand against that. We do not want to see teachers teaching their white pupils about white privilege and inherited yeah. racial guilt. And let me be clear, any school which teaches these elements of critical race theory as fact, or which promotes partisan political views such as defunding the police without offering a balanced treatment of opposing views is breaking the law. So uh, those were my two comments. And a handful of people in that private Facebook group took issue with my perspective. Immediately, a complaint was filed against me, uh, which led to a month-long investigation by my school board followed by the decision to suspend me for a week without pay, a decision I'm currently in the process of appealing. Uh, now, a full year later, the same complainant has escalated the complaint, the, the same complaint to the Ontario College of Teachers. So uh, the college informed me last week that I'm, I'm under investigation again, meaning my teaching license is currently at stake. Wow. Now, did you ever think that making such a comment on social media would explode the way that it has? And what's the feedback been like from any of your colleagues? Hmm. Um, well, okay, so I wasn't necessarily surprised that people reacted the way that they did. Um, as I've been, I, I, I see the way that things are going in, in, in our culture. And I've witnessed these kind of cancel culture games over and over, or not games, but tactics over and over. Um, I'm familiar with them. Um, that said, I, I know that nothing about my comment was hateful or discriminatory. And I've, I've already been sanctioned for it, too. So it's both surprising to me and disappointing that um, this, this is actually being investigated again. To me, it, it just doesn't have any merit. What we're talking about is simply a difference of opinion. And um, I think if living in a free society means anything at all, it means the right for us to speak openly and freely, even if we, regardless of whether we agree or disagree or whether our views are popular or unpopular, we should be allowed to speak. So I just find it very sad because 
I know my intentions are good. And um, deep down, I believe we all sort of want the same things. We want to live in a peaceful, just society. And I just wish that people would make more of an effort to hear the other side and find common ground. Because often I think what we're doing is um, we're resorting to these um, labels and insults and just just different methods of silencing the opposing view rather than actually engaging with it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, ultimately, um, this is, I, I hope that this complaint is seen for what it is and that it's rejected. Uh, obviously, there hasn't been any kind of decisions on, on this matter yet, but I, um, I just hope that in the future, complaints like this can just be disregarded. I don't think they have merit at all. And I think um, this kind of thing generates a lot of fear and self-censorship. And it's just time that we stand up for our liberal, our, our classic liberal values again. Mm-hmm. Now, seeing the way that this has played out and the backlash that you've since received, um, do you still stand by the comment? And, you know, maybe did it tarnish your view of the system, the educational system at all? Absolutely. I stand by my comments. I'm, I'm not going to apologize or anything like that. Um, what I'm advocating for is very important. Um, I'm advocating for an impartial non-politicized learning environment um, where students can be taught how to think and not what to think. And this is not a radical notion. It's, it's just not. Um, we need to teach critical thinking where students are, are able to come to their own conclusions. Um, they're the citizens and the leaders of the future. And like the generations that came before them, they're going to have to think for themselves in order to solve the problems of tomorrow. Um, That means they need to practice these skills. They need to hear different viewpoints and learn to actually engage with them civilly, um, even those they disagree with. So in my mind, uh, it's very clear. Students should not even know where their their teachers, what, what their teachers' opinions are, what side of the fence they 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 are on um on any political issue it's just not it shouldn't be a thing um like obviously as human beings we all have biases but as teachers our responsibility is to eliminate or strive to eliminate that bias and not amplify it which i think has been increasingly sort of accepted it's an attempt to silence a view that that they don't agree with. So that's, that's just, it's not right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Now, uh, what's the next step here for you? I understand that you have obtained legal counsel. Can you shed any light on where you go from here? Yeah, I have had, I've spoken to lawyers. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know what, what happens next, but I do know that I'll be sticking to my principles and I can, I, I will continue to defend my right to free expression. Um, over the last few days, I've actually received many, many uh, supportive messages from parents, teachers, uh, you name it, uh, even students um, across Ontario, so or maybe even Canada. Um, so I, I know that I'm not alone. I, I speak for many people here and with the concerns that I bring up. And um, over the last few years, I've acquired quite a bit of knowledge. I've been digging into books and podcasts and all of that. And I am confident that I'm standing on the right side of history. So regardless of how, you know, it, it, whatever personal costs that come my way, I am, I'm willing to just stand here and defend liberalism in our classroom and in society at large. I think it's the most important battle of our days, like of, of, of today, where we say something is anti-racist, we say it's equitable or diverse, but it's it, what we really mean by that is, is 
I mean, it, it is so intolerant to different views that it's it's it is just simply not liberal anymore. What liberalism used to mean, I mean, well, what it still means is being accepting, being tolerant of people who think differently than you, and understanding that the individual has has dignity just because they're an individual, not because of their race, not because of their gender, not because of whatever other characteristic you want to label them as, just because they are an individual in our society and they're allowed to have a view that's different than yours, they're allowed to live their lives differently than than you are. Um, it's I, I think actually though this has become a lot bigger than just left or right. Like it's really that that's not what it is. It's it's become sort of more author authoritarian versus liberal uh sorry um libertarian it's on the one hand you have people who want to take control sort of of how other people uh think and how they live and all of that because they think that they have the right answers and on the other hand you have those who say well you know, we're not all necessarily going to have a consensus here, but the, the important part is that we agree that we can disagree, uh, which I think is a lot healthier for a society. Because if you just decide that, look, only uh, these ideas can participate in the battle of ideas, well, you're limiting all of these other ideas that, that don't get to compete because you've just said, well, they're wrong, they're they're alt right. They're bigoted. They're they're not they're not allowed to enter the, the arena. So how are we we going to know that what we're doing is actually right? How are we going to deal with future problems if if our um our the ideas that we can choose from are so limited? It's just it's not a winning battle, and in the long term, it's going to have some devastating effects. Bringing diverse voices to the arena is exactly what a functioning democracy is all about. Silencing dissent is bigotry in and of itself. True inclusiveness, true equality, hears all voices and debates them rigorously. It reminds me of that saying, that the truth does not mind being questioned, but a lie does not like to be challenged. And those lawyers that Chanel references in our interview are the very same lawyers from the Democracy Fund that I mentioned before that I have put her in touch with. Since we conducted that interview, they have onboarded her as a client and you can help assist with her fight against this woke doctrine and ideology at stopcrt.ca. We'll be sure to stay up to date on this case as it proceeds through the complainant process. And you can too at that special website again, stopcrt.ca. For Rebel News, I'm Tamara Ugolini. At stopcrt.ca, we have developed a petition and email campaign aimed at the Ontario legislature to stop critical race theory in Ontario schools that are currently being proposed through Bill 67 under the Racial Equity in the Education System Act. The bill will require school boards to create and enforce racial equity plans and will also penalize anyone who is perceived to be violating this mantra. You can also chip in there if you're able to, to donate to Chanel's legal case. All of the information can be found at stopcrt.ca.